everyone. My name is Samantha Oslin. I'm a sport fish biologist with the Alaska Department of Fish and Game. Um, I've been with the department for 17 years now and over my time here, I field a lot of questions on, I'm coming to Alaska, where can I fish? So I thought we'd make this video today to answer some of those questions and maybe steer you in the right direction so you're successful when you arrive here for your fishing trip. So one of the first things people typically ask me is where can I fish when I'm here? And that's a really big question. The state is huge. I'm gonna speak mostly to the South Central region of Alaska that I'm familiar with. I work in the um, Matsu Valley area. Um, fishing here can be wildly dependent on two things. What do you wanna catch? The salmon start migrating as soon as the ice is off the river. So the king salmon are the first to show up here followed by sockeye, chum, and pinks. And then in the fall, the coho come in. So depending on what you'd like to catch, you might wanna consider early summer season months for king salmon fishing, for example. And then if you wanna get into coho fishing, you can shoot for late fall. We also have a lot of resident fishing opportunities like rainbow trout, grayling, arctic char. Um, we have a lot of stocked fisheries and those fisheries are consistent over time. But if you're shooting for salmon, which is what most people are calling me to ask me on advice for, um, you may want to consider different times of the summer to arrive here and fish. The other thing is if you've already plugged in your vacation time to come to Alaska, say the 4th of July, you can contact your local fish and game office and we can dial you into the species of salmon that are prevalent in various locations. Now there's a lot of tools that we have on our webpage that you can use to access information that we put out to anglers. Um, we do weekly fishing reports and if you want to see what's happening in July to plan your trip you can pull up weekly fishing reports from the south central area and they're consistent over time but we update them every year on a weekly basis to really dial in anglers as to what's happening with in real time information. Um, those fishing reports are online and you hear them on the radio frequently as well. The other thing you can access is our run timing. So we have information on our webpage for run timing for the various areas within the South Central region. For example, the Matsu Valley has slightly different run timing for some of our salmon species than Anchorage or the Homer or Shaladna area offices. Um, geographically, Alaska is huge. So if you're planning a trip here and you have say a four to five day time frame, you may fly into Anchorage, it's typical of most people, and say you have a small time frame, like only a few days, you might wanna choose one location and then just stick there because you're gonna spend one entire day most likely driving to Homer, for example, from Anchorage. So you'll spend a whole day traveling there and on a map, it can be really deceitful the amount of time and space um, within the South Central region that you'll travel. So keep that in mind. The best thing I would suggest is come without a giant plan. Say you head down towards Soldotna and the fishing for sockeye is great and you wanna spend more time there. It's best to not have something on your agenda if you get into the fish when you're in a location like that and you wanna spend three or four more days there and choose another location for your next trip here because hopefully you'll return and spend more time with us. That brings me um, into lodging. If you're an Alaskan resident watching this video, like me, you've probably exhausted every possibility for lodging depending on where you've been fishing. I've stayed in cabins, we've rented hotel rooms, we've stayed in vacation rentals, we've rented RVs, we now have a travel trailer, I've slept in tents, I've even slept in my car for different fishing trips depending on where we're heading and how long we were there. So if you're a non-resident, a real versatile um, way to travel and fish and see Alaska is to rent an RV. There's a lot of places that do that. Um, what that provides is your food, lodging, and accommodations all in one place and you're, it's easy to book, it's easy to move around, just depending on what your budget allows. So you might be more comfortable in a hotel or in a bed and breakfast or in um, some sort of cabin rental where you can do your own thing and you know you want to be stationed in those locations for a certain amount of time. And the other thing to consider is um, inclement weather. Here in Alaska, we can go from nice sunny warm days and the next day it's freezing cold. For example, we're in our fall months now and fall here is about a week. Sometimes it feels less than that, but it goes quick is what I'm saying. And one day it can be 
you know, leaves falling off the trees, the weather is great and the next day we have ice along the edges of the lakes, things are starting to freeze. It happens really fast, October, especially the month of October, we see a lot of changes in temperatures, sometimes up to 15 degrees in one month and we lose a lot of daylight this time of year. So it's opposite in the summer. If you come here in June, you're gonna be here um, for the endless sunlight, which is amazing. You can be here for midnight sun and literally fish for a very long time. You can fish from sunset to sunup and you'll see it happen all at one time. It's pretty amazing. So the summer months are great and the fall months are gorgeous as well, but you'll have to try to tr plan your fishing trip and, and when you would like to be here, consider your lodging, consider the geographics of Alaska. And then of course, we have to talk about fishing regulations and that's mainly why my phone rings and what I talk to people about all day long. Alaska has a different set of fishing regulations in the lower 48 because we have species of fish that come and go. When they're anadromous, they'll go to salt water from fresh and come back to fresh water to spawn. And so our populations fluctuate. So we can't just slap a blanket regulation on these fisheries and expect people to comply. We intensely manage these fisheries so that they're sustainable over time. And so we always have salmon for people to fish for. And it can be a tough thing to navigate the right books. I hear a lot of times you need a lawyer to go through this book. Well, I'm not a lawyer, but you have me and you have fellow staff members of Fishing Game. If at any point in time, um, you read our regulation book and it's completely confusing, you're not alone. And the best thing you can do is to reach out to one of our area offices and make a phone call to us and we can go through the regs with a fine tooth comb. We can talk about the species of fish that you'd like to target. We can put you in a place that you'll be successful more than likely and hopefully set you up with the type of tackle and lures that are allowed at the time. And that brings me into emergency orders. So an emergency order is something that we'll issue from our office if we're tracking fish populations, say through a salmon weir. We put our fish counts online. You can view those daily. If we're falling behind in our fisheries and we're not hitting the escapements that we find to be sustainable, we can put out an emergency order to close the fishery. Or in the opposite, if we're seeing good populations and a really strong run of fish, we might increase a bag limit or allow the use of bait or some sort of liberalization to help you, you know, catch a few more fish. So keep an eye out for emergency orders. They're a real thing. We issue many of them every season. So before you fish, give us a holler and we can dial you in um, on in any emergency orders happening in the area you're fishing. Um, that brings me to what, what type of gear people typically ask should I bring. So there's fly fishing, there's spinning rods. Um, it's kind of to your preference, but if you are coming here from the lower 48, fishing in Alaska, is, there's a lot of different techniques and it's not real similar to your typical cast and retrieve and you're not throwing, you know, there's no live bait allowed here. Um, you'll want to chat with us before you come up and we can explain how we fish here and depending on the species of fish you're targeting, why we do those things. Um, so for gear, um, you want something steady. If you're going to bring your own gear, eight weight fly rods are great. They're pretty universal for sockeye fishing, um, rainbow trout fishing, even coho fishing. And then um, same thing with spinning gear, bring something steady with a good backbone because these fish bite hard and a lot of times you're pulling them out of a current. So you'll need something that um, you can contend with with larger fish species. And what to pack in terms of clothing. It's typically cool here and cool here for us is, you know, 40 to 60 degrees, which probably isn't typical if you're watching this from the lower 48. Um, you probably want to dress in layers. We wear a lot of synthetics. Don't bring cotton products if it's going to rain. If you get cold and wet, you're going to be miserable and lead to hypothermic conditions. You want to stay warm and dry and always remember to pack and wear things that you can pull out in layers. Rain jackets are a great idea, something windproof, something that's breathable, and then warmer layers underneath and a good pair of boots. Um, on the topic of gear, we do offer a rod loaner program through Fishing Game. Several of our offices run either small programs or sometimes larger programs. We do ice fishing as well as uh, rod reels for the summer. So to see if we have gear available for you, just give us a call at our office and we can discuss what we may or may not have for inventory at the time. 
something else to consider when you get here if you've never fished here and you want to fish with the guide they're very knowledgeable they know what they're doing do your homework um, do some research and make sure you call the outfit that you're going to go with and ask lots of questions to make sure that they can accommodate your needs. Fishing with a guide can oftentimes open your eyes to the different techniques of fishing that I talked about earlier here in Alaska and maybe they give you a good introduction kind of like going to a class for the first time you learn a little bit and then you can do it on your own. So it might be worth the money for a fishing guide but if you show up to a location and find that with what you're seeing that we're doing in terms of flossing for sockeye um, or you know casting for king sam really isn't that difficult and you're comfortable then maybe you don't need to consider a guide service so regardless of where you want to fish or what you want to fish for you might want to consider um, if you enjoy an experience with less people and you want to be remote the expense for those trips can be extensive because a lot of times in Alaska, you have to fly somewhere or take a boat or go upstream quite a distance to get away from people. Anything off the road system, plan on encountering other people. Some fisheries are way busier than other fisheries, but be prepared that you probably will can come in contact with some combat fishing where you've probably seen photos of this where it's shoulder to shoulder fishermen. That's actually a real thing here. Um, I've done it myself and I don't mind fishing next to people. I've made some really good friends on the river over the years and I've had some negative experiences. So um, take it with a grain of salt, but know that anywhere accessible off the road, you're probably going to encounter a lot of people or more people during the peak of our fishing seasons. So to sum up this presentation, I'd highly encourage you to call a local fish and game office, get with a biologist, um, like myself or anyone in-house that can answer those questions. Our front counter staff are completely knowledgeable. What we can do for you is answer questions that I've covered today. We can go more in depth and when you arrive here, if you contact us, we can really fine tune your experience by describing exactly what's happening in our area um, in real time information for you. So hopefully you'll enjoy your time here. Your fishing trip will be successful and you'll come back and see us again. Take care.